The next property of inverses is that inverses are symmetrical over the line y equals x. In other words, if f and f inverse are inverses, and the point a comma b is on the graph of f, then the point b comma a is on the graph of f inverse. Let's see what this means. We're going to graph f of x equals 3x plus 2, and f inverse of y equals y minus 2 over 3. These two functions are inverses of each other. Desmos is not equipped with the ability to take inverse function notation, so we do need to rewrite inverse function notation as two functions with different names but the same variable. So in this case, f of x equals 3x plus 2 is no problem. That's our first function. It's written in terms of the variable x. Now we're going to rewrite f inverse of y as another function in terms of x. So you'll see that when we rewrite this, that all we're doing is taking the f inverse y and rewriting it as g of x, which means that the y becomes an x, giving us g of x equals the fraction with a numerator of x minus 3 and a denominator of 3. Now that we've rewritten this, we can take a look at the graph. f of x equals 3x plus 2 is a line that is increasing. It has a y-intercept of 0, 2 and a slope of 3, which means that another point on this graph is 1, 5. g of x equals a fraction with x minus 2 all over 3 is another line. I'm going to just rewrite this slightly to be x over 3 minus 2 thirds or one-third x minus two-thirds. This way we see it a little bit closer to its y equals mx plus b form. This tells me that the y-intercept of g is zero comma negative two-thirds, and it has a slope of one-third. And it looks like it also passes through two comma zero, and 5 comma 1. Now we can already see this property where we have points where the x and y coordinates are reversed. For example, the point 1 comma 5 on f corresponds to the point 5 comma 1 on g. The point 0 comma 2 on f corresponds to the point 2 comma 0 on g. And we have a point on g, 0 negative 2 thirds, and sure enough, if you look at the graph of f, you'll see a point at negative 2 thirds comma 0. So there's another corresponding point. Now these two lines are a perfect reflection over the line y equals x. Let's go ahead and draw that line in. It's a perfect diagonal going through the origin, and I'm going to draw that with a dashed line to show it's a line of symmetry. Practically, this means that the perpendicular distance from this line to a point on f is equal to the perpendicular distance from a point on this line and g. For example, if I look at that point 1, 5 and draw a perpendicular line down to the line y equals x, and then I do it in the opposite direction exactly through that point, you'll see that I get an equidistant point on the other side. That's the point 5, 1. Before we move on, I have something for you to try. Put these two functions, f of x and g of x, into your Desmos calculator, and then in the line below that, find f of g of x. Just type it in exactly like that. And then on the line below that, do g of f of x and see what happens. Pause the video and give it a try. Okay, we're back. Let's jump over to Desmos and see what happens. I have my graphs of f and g on here, and I'm going to include the graph of f of g of x. And you'll see that that gives me the perfect diagonal y equals x. Likewise, g of f of x also gives the perfect diagonal y equals x. So one way you can test whether functions are actually inverses is to put them into Desmos as like an f and g function and then do the compositions both ways and make sure that this is what you see. So in both cases we see the line y equals x. Now we can also use these properties of inverse functions to 
start with one graph and actually draw the inverse, even if we don't know what the function is. In this first case, we have a function f. It's a line that has a y-intercept at 0, 1. It has another point at 1, 4, and another point at negative 1, negative 2. Let's go ahead and draw the inverse. So we know two things. One, we know this should be a perfect reflection over the line y equals x, but even more importantly, we know that on the inverse, every point should have its x and y coordinates reversed. So where we had a point of 1, 4, let's put a point at 4, 1. And where we had a point at 0, 1, let's put a point at 1, 0. And where we had a point at negative 1, negative 2, let's put a point at negative 2, negative 1. This should make a straight line since the original graph was a straight line. So let's go ahead and draw that line. We'll call that one G. And to double check that these are in fact inverses, let's also draw the line y equals x. I'll draw that one as a dashed red line here. And sure enough, those two lines do look like a perfect reflection of each other over that line y equals x. Why don't you try the second graph? We have a graph that looks like a square root function. It has points at 1, 0 as its end point. 2 comma 1 as a point on the graph, and 5 comma 2 as another point on the graph. Pause the video and see if you can draw this in verse. Okay, we're back. Let's see how you did. We take all of the points that we know about the graph of G, and let's reverse the x and y coordinates to get a graph of f. So 1 comma 0 becomes 0 comma 1, 2 comma 1 becomes 1 comma 2, and 5 comma 2 becomes 2 comma 5. So we have a function that looks kind of like half a parabola, and that is our function, let's call it f. To double check it, we can add this diagonal. I'll draw that with a red dashed line. Is that y equals x? And you can see that those do in fact make a nice reflection of each other over the line y equals x.